delighted to welcome as our last of our lightning uh, uh, talkers, Mary Lynch, um, who's the head of healthcare programmes at the Irish Hospice Foundation. Again, to give you a flavour, a very short flavour of uh, the work that the Irish Hospice Foundation does. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Suzanne, and well done again to UCC. And I'm um, uh, delighted to be here. And also, I think a lot of my talk will be replicated because a, a number of people have um, uh, referred to the work of the Hospice Foundation already, which I suppose um, looks at supporting seed funding and innovation in the area of all, um, palliative care across all diseases and all care settings. We were uh, founded um, 30 years ago, and by one of our celebrations, we're relaunching, or, or we've developed our strategic plan, which was just launched last week. We receive no uh, core core funding, so all, all our funding comes from um, voluntary contributions from the public. When we look at um, how our programmes are divided, um, healthcare is just one of a range of four programmes, and I guess that's what I'm going to be talking mostly about today. Um, and the healthcare programmes are um, d defined around where people die. So we have a programme that supports people um, to die well in hospitals called Hospice Friendly Hospital. We have a Journey of Change programme that looks at improving end-of-life care for people who die in residential care settings, and that's 25% of the 30,000 people who die in Ireland. We have a primary palliative care programme supporting GPs and um, practice nurses, public health nurses. Um, but what I'm going to talk to you today about is the palliative care for all programme. Um, where, uh, and when you look at the cause of death, um, it's a, approximately 70% of people with diseases die, other than cancer, die without cancer. Um, this programme was established in 2008 and looked at um, dementia, heart failure and COPD. Um, and obviously today I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, a lot about dementia, um, but before that just to reflect on some of the work we've done um, with advancing neurological disease. So with the Neurological Association of Ireland, we established a study, a study to look at the um, needs of people, uh, the, the patient interest groups um, with advancing neurological disease. And we, with an independent researcher, we got them to tell us what they understood as their, their part of care needs. And not surprising, and it's come up already, the clarity around language and terminology was an issue, in addition to the fact that services were not equally available. And they, had, um, they wanted some help in, in planning ahead and having the discussions and found that staff they worked with were, weren't prepared to have these discussions. We were delighted that Professor Orla Hardiman launched this report as part of a roundtable meeting we held in 2014. And that, I suppose, was one, it was a, a smaller version of this, is, is bringing together people who are interested in the area of research and advancing neurological disease. So when we look um, within the Hospice Foundation and the work that we've done in dementia palliative care, and this has been supported through the Atlantic Philanthropy um, Funds, and we're just coming to the end of, of that round of funding, but it really has helped us to focus on um, uh, and accelerate the work in relation to dementia palliative care. I'm going to talk um, about the guidance documents and the information leaflets and home deaths and dementia, but before I do that, I suppose to um, reflect on the thirst and the hunger, we held four, um, uh, for, for staff in, in around Ireland, we held four regional seminars on dementia palliative care and 500 people attended those. So there is a huge um, interest in this area across, across Ireland. Um, not surprised to hear we have funded over 11 organisations with 100, uh, over 100,000 euro to support innovation within services. And we're, we've been delighted to work in partnership with the Alzheimer's Society about involving people with dementia. I have to say I'm um, humbled and honoured and um, really struck about how interested people with dementia are to talk about planning ahead um, involving them and talking about, uh, about end-of-life conversations. So the, the guidance documents, which we four of which have been done in partnership with UCC, and um, again, it's been a privilege to work with, with UCC, uh, led out by Dr. Alice Coffey, um, for the development of the, the four guidance documents on the right-hand side, and they're going to be ready in um, June. Uh, so they were developed following the NCEC, um, 
protocols for development of guidance and um, w uh, quite a rigorous approach um, was developed and when you look at the four or the seven guidance documents in total we have had a, a, between the different expert groups that were established and uh, expert reviewers there was over 70 people involved in this process um, the the three on the right were developed and led out by the team within the hospice foundation and accompanying them are one-page fact sheets, which are the kind of a uh, little bit of the just-in-time learning. The information leaflets, again, there's one example in your pack um, that the Alzheimer's Society have left in. And we, we hope to update some of, some of those leaflets um, as, a, as a result of the, the advanced care planning uh, guidance document. Um, and these, these are very popular. Finally, I want to talk to you about the small audit we did in relation to people who are dying at home. We have a night nursing service and there's um, uh, 110 people were referred to the service uh, this is sorry um, last year and we audited 52 of those um, by and uh, to, to get a deeper understanding of what supports people um, who die at home with dementia. Um, get the profile and the supports and the key finding was um the what struck me was having a supportive gp who was available to do visits out of hours um, and the level of family involvement and um, so three out of four families were providing 24 hours care and there was also a significant number of people who were involved in planning ahead and had made a made a decision this this um this poster is uh, the details of this poster is, is down below and equally we have an information stand which gives a sample of, of the work. And I, is it, where's the ice bucket challenge? <laughs> <laughs> I'm testing you. <laughs>